All right, hey everybody, thanks for coming back to Easy Bee's Kitchen. Now I'm gonna give you a rundown, piece by piece, of what makes up this beautiful mayo, all right? What we have here, three egg yolks, one egg white, okay? We need one and a quarter cup of sunflower oil. Today I'm actually using a blend of olive oil and sunflower oil. It's perfect, unbelievably smooth, velvety, and I like that flavor that the olive oil imparts. Now for our spices, we got a teaspoon of salt, we got half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one quarter teaspoon of onion powder, one quarter teaspoon of white pepper, that's ground white pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Okay, this is gonna make approximately uh, 12 ounces of mayo uh, for less than what you could go out and buy the same for, okay? And let me tell you, you can keep this all organic, make it incredible, then you'll be doing double savings, okay? All right, I wanna thank you guys for coming back to Easy Beast Kitchen. You can find me at easybkitchen.com. My name's Tim Broxton. Stick around and I'll show you how to put it all together. My name's Tim Broxton. Today I'm going to teach you how to make an incredibly velvety, smooth, flavorful mayo. Okay? This is a lost art in this country. I was intrigued as a child when I went over to a friend's house. He stayed on a farm and his parents had made homemade mayo. Saw how easy it was. And ever since then, I wondered why more people don't do it. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to put this together. It is very simple, very easy. Okay, here are the ingredients. We got three eggs. This is our spice palette here. We've got some lemon juice and some oil. It is that simple. Truly, this can be done with much fewer, but I like mine zesty, I like mine flavorful. So I'm gonna show you guys how to put it together right quick. First things first, I've been letting these eggs sit out at room temperature now okay for about an hour why did i do that because the yolk inside this egg is going to be able to better absorb the oil that we're going to be putting in this to create our emulsion man next thing we'll do is crack open an egg and put it in a bowl just like that i've got a spare bowl here you can see i've got this egg full egg yolk and all this one I'm actually going to reserve the white in a, in a separate bowl. So I've taken this yolk and I'm just going to toss it right in. I'm going to do the same thing with my third egg. All I want from it is the yolk as well. And whatever you do, don't throw that egg white away. That, no need to do that. Save that. Put it in tomorrow morning's omelet, okay? Simple. I'm going to wash up and show you the second step. Good enough. All right, so I've washed up. I've got my blender plugged in, and I'm just gonna pour these eggs right in. I'm gonna blend those in my blender for about 15 seconds. It helps if I had a blade. All right, I've poured the eggs into the blender, and in this blender, I have a plastic Blade. I don't think you need anything else to beat up on some egg yolk. So I'm going to blend those to smooth them out just a little bit for about 10 or so seconds to make sure they're good and mixed. All right, here's a good close up of our spice palette. And what I have here is a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter te teaspoon of paprika, a quarter teaspoon of white pepper, fresh ground and a quarter teaspoon of ground onion powder. All right guys, here it is. This is the next step. Put together right here all my spices and I'm just gonna toss them in and incorporate that for another, about 10 seconds. Make sure they're incorporated nicely. This is where we begin to add the oil and it's crucial when adding the oil to pour in slowly so the emulsion can occur. Okay, we're trying to suspend all of this together to where it stays in a nice, velvety, creamy state, all right? So the way to do that is to pour this oil in very slowly. So you can see I'm kind of drizzling the oil in very slowly so the egg yolks can accept the oil properly. Once 
once you see that your mayo is starting to thicken up, you can now add the oil quickly. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take the lemon juice. All right, I'm using a Meyer lemon, which happens to be one of my favorite lemons. Incredibly sweet, not as tart as uh, some other lemons, or as a traditional lemon. And I've thrown that in, very nice. So why would you go to the store and buy a jar of mayo that has 16 ingredients? Those ingredients including artificial flavors, modified, food starch, hydrogenated oils, high fructose corn syrup, garbage like that. Why would you, why would you even do that? I'm gonna tell you guys, I can already smell this. It looks beautiful. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. All right, y'all, y'all saw how simple that was. I've got me a little container here, which I can store it in very simply. Just an old glass jar that some dolmas came in, and I'm gonna refill it with some homemade mayo. Spatulas, guys, they're key, okay? Already told y'all to get up to Spisco here in Gainesville, 206 College Avenue. They have one of the better selections of spatulas you'll ever see. I'm just gonna put it right in my jar so I've got this homemade goodie goodness. And the recipe that I just gave you is filling up a 12 ounce container, okay? So this will keep in the refrigerator for about five to six days, okay? Why only five or six days? Why not a month? Why not two months? Like the store bought stuff. Well, <laughs> because we don't have all the preservatives. We don't have all of those manufactured substances in this stuff. Here it is guys, Easy Bee's homemade mayonnaise, all right? Take a look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Perfect color, perfect everything. It makes an incredible dip. It makes the best hamburger. It makes the best turkey sandwich. Here it is guys, Easy Bee's homemade mayo. Just the way you like it. Thick, look at this. Look at this. Absolutely perfect, okay? That's how mayonnaise is. That's how mayonnaise should be. This is delicious on turkey wraps. Delicious on everything. I've already told you you can turn it into a salad dressing if you like. It's an incredible dip for all types of fruits, for all types of vegetables. You name it, it's there. Trust me. Go get you some lobster, see me a nice fat tail, and put this on it, and you'll be in heaven. If you're upset that this isn't white and pearly as the mayonnaise you buy in the store, know this. You can take out some of that paprika, which I think is an essential ingredient for flavor, okay? Reduce it at least by half, and you will have that pearly white mayonnaise you're looking for. If you guys are wondering the music in the background today, okay, it's passion. Go to YouTube and type in passion undefined okay passion f the guy's name's jeremy's out of san francisco really good musicians does tons of original music a lot of covers you'll find them very interesting check them out all right guys you've seen it right here in easy beast kitchen how simple it is to make homemade mayo the next time you're in the store again check the back of one of those one of those jars and read the amount of garbage that's okay all right guys all right guys now you've seen it how easy it is to make homemade mayo right here in easy bees kitchen all right next time you're in a grocery store pick up a jar of your favorite mayo all right and definitely don't buy it but read the back of it and see what's in it this is going to become your new favorite jar of mayo trust me okay Thanks again for coming and watching. You can check me out at easybkitchen.com or my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 
user slash EZB Kitchen. Until then, we'll see you next time.